Well, good morning, everyone. We are gathered together in our living room to worship today, and uh, I just I hope this is going to work online. We, we, we're trying to stream not only our you know our our time here, but also the words to the songs, um, because we really want this to be interactive. So if you're uh, out there on Facebook right now and you're going to be participating in this time of worship, um, I just want to invite you to comment to. To, to put those likes on there, to interact to the best of your ability with what's happening. Um, also, if you have a prayer request, something on your mind, go ahead and, and put that in the comments. Um, we're going to be following that. Um, Laurie's going to be back there in the kitchen uh, following the comments. And so when we get to the shepherding prayer, I'd like to be able to pray for the things that are on your mind. So go ahead and write your comments in there. Make sure you put prayer requests. And then, and then put your prayer requests, make it known. Um, and also interact as we're singing. You know, normally if we're in church together, we would raise our hands and we would say amen. Well, you can type that in the comments. And it's just a way to, it's just a way to participate, right? Um, and even, even during, the, during the sermon, if you have a, a thought or a question or something that stands out, just uh, type that in there as well. And uh, we just really want to make the most of, of this opportunity we have to worship together. Um, I also want to say that uh, we're going to have two virtual events this week, at least. We may, we may do more than that, because um, everybody that's you know, staying home, we're feeling isolated, and uh, we might need more than just two times. But on Monday night, we're going to have a men's Bible study at 8 o'clock, and we're going to do that on Zoom. So um, be paying attention for a text about that, or uh, in the group meet, about the men's Bible study invitation. Um, Monday night at 8 o'clock, and then Wednesday night, uh, House Church is going to meet just like we did last week. We had uh, 25 people join us for House Church last week, which was really pretty pretty incredible. That that counts people who were in the room as well as you know people who logged on. I think there was like 18 or so that were actually logged on. Um, so join us again this week for House Church. That was encouraging for me. I know midweek to just see everybody's face and uh, get to kind of connect like that. So we'll plan on doing that again this Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Um, that's all the announcements I have. If you have any other announcements or anything you want to you know, make known, just put them down in the comments. And let's, uh, let's, call, let's be called to worship. Oh, one more thing. We're going to sing today, and I want you guys to sing. So if you're sitting in front of your phone or in front of your computer um, with your family maybe or with one other person, like actually sing. That's um, you know part of what we want to. Part of the reason we're doing music, and I know it's weird, but part of the reason we're doing this is so we can participate, and that's why we're putting the words on the screen, which hopefully is going to work um, perfectly. Um, we're going to trust God with that, and you guys join in and sing with us. So let's be called to worship, and uh, this is from I, um, from not Isaiah. This is from Habakkuk. Though the fig tree now listen to this, listen to this. Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail, and the fields yield no food. The flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation, God the Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me tread on the high places. Man, even in the midst of a, a an unprecedented in our lifetime event like this, though the fig tree should not blossom, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. And that's our task today. It's to rejoice in the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for this promise. We thank you for the hope that we have in you, that we can truly rejoice in you. Lord, we pray that you would help us to do that even now, Lord, even if we're sitting at home alone watching a screen. Oh, Lord, that we might be able to truly rejoice in you. Lord, help us. Give us faith, even for the next few moments. Give us faith. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together. 
God will fight your battles.
amen together in this prayer. And um, hopefully the words to the prayer will be on your screen. Let's pray together. We confess, our Father, that we do not live up to the family name. We are more ready to resent than to forgive, more ready to manipulate than to serve, more ready to fear than to love, more ready to keep our distance than to welcome, more ready to compete than to help. At the root of this behavior is our mistrust. We do not love one another as we should because we do not believe that you love us as you do. Forgive us our cold unbelief and make, us more, make more vivid to us the meaning and depth of your love at the cross. Show us what it cost you to give up your son that we might become your sons and daughters. We ask this in the name of Jesus our righteousness. Amen. Amen. As I was looking at that prayer, one line really stood out to me, and it was this. We are more ready to keep our distance <laughs> than to welcome. And, you know, you might think about keeping our distance because we have to. You know, we're keeping our distance because we have to, but there's a challenge in that. Yes, we might have to keep our distance physically right now, but that doesn't mean we have to keep our distance from each other in other ways. You know, we can reach out to each other. We, we, as, as believers, we need to be aware of, of people around us who are, who are lonely, yeah. who, are, who are not having any human connection at all. I mean, there might be a way for you to gather some of your neighbors, like people who are actually in your neighborhood, maybe not physically, but maybe into a text group, maybe into a, a, a Facebook comment maybe into uh, a phone conversation or a video chat. There's other ways for us to, uh, you know, to not keep our distance and to welcome one another during this time. But we, as Christians, we've got to be, we gotta be creative about that right now because we can't gather physically, but we, maybe we can do it in other ways. Um, let me read you this assurance of God's grace where God says in Ephesians chapter 2, But now you have been united with Christ Jesus, once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. For Christ himself brought us peace. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people. When in his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. And that's good news that Jesus broke down in his body, in his flesh, the dividing wall of hostility between warring peoples, between enemies, God made them friends. God invites all of us to be unified, to become a part of his family, to be reconciled into a new people by the work of Christ and through the blood of Jesus. And uh, man, it's a challenge for us right now to express that and to live that out. Um, but I want to encourage us as a church to find ways to connect Find ways to reach out. If you, if you feel like, I'm feeling lonely, no one's reaching out to me, that's a clue, right? It's not no one's reaching out to you. It's you can reach out, right? You can take that step. And um, man, we can all take that phone call, make that text message, you know, set up that video chat, whatever you need to do. Um, and, and ask me for help. I, I'm willing to help. I mean, anybody here is willing to help um, if the, if the t technology is the challenge. Um, you know, we're figuring it out. So um, communicate with each other. And let your, especially your neighbors, maybe who don't even have a church. They don't have a family, you know. They're maybe really lonely right now. And this is an opportunity for us who know the sweetness of fellowship, right? We know it, to share it with others who might be in need. Let's, um, let's stand and let's sing together about the love of Christ pulling us out of the depths.
guys can be seated. We're going to take a few minutes and do a ministry spotlight, but today I want our ministry spotlight to be uh, your participation. So I want you guys to share um, either out loud here in the room or in the comments. Share how have you been able to meet with God? Um, how have you been able to, um, to spend more time in prayer? How have you been able to spend more time in the Word? Maybe you can give this as advice for some of the rest of us who might be struggling to do that. Um, one of the things that a lot of us have more of now is time. And um, encourage us. Tell us, how, ha how has God encouraged you in the Word? How has He encouraged you in prayer? Um, so I'm just going to give us a few minutes of reflection to share that. If anybody here wants to share something, um, please do. Um, how has God met you during this time? You can write your comments in the comments. Mm -hmm. I think um, the house church is really encouraging. Um, not that I don't think that anyone cares about me or anything, but sometimes you get in your head and you're alone. And it's just you and the dog, and you're just like, God, please, like <laughs> this is terrible. But then when you get on face or you get on our Skype call, and everyone takes the effort to you know join in and talk and see how everyone's doing, and even after we were still on the phone talking, like doing life, mm -hmm. made me happy because like, you know, we love each other, we care about each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That fellowship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good, thank you. I definitely agree with Chelsea. Um, with the, you know, the virtual house church, mm -hmm. it was really cool. And um, I even got to invite a friend that is in Florence to come to house yeah. church. And she could stay where she was and come to house church. Mm -hmm. And um, the extra time is really helpful just to have um, that quiet um, solitude but at the same time have community also so the solitude doesn't become isolation um, but that quiet time is definitely um, a good space to talk to God and read his word without any distractions or having to get up super early and be like oh I forgot to pray before <laughs> I read yes. the word <laughs> yeah that's awesome a lot of times we beat ourselves up for not getting up early and doing our quiet time, you know, or spending time with the Lord early in the morning, yeah. which we all would like to do and want to do and, and try to do. Um, but hey, now, you know, you might have time during the middle of the day to just stop what you're doing and open up your Bible app or crack open an old fashioned uh, book Bible and read some scripture. Um, some of us are going through a couple of um, Bible reading plans online. Uh, or on the Bible app. There's one uh, on Mark that some of you are reading together right now. And it's been really encouraging for me to read about the life of Jesus and about his ministry, um, to just get another glimpse of who he is and what it looks like for God to be in the flesh. And that's been really encouraging to me. It's been encouraging to watch other people comment about that and the things that God is um, showing them through their time reading the Word. So... Um, that's a, that's another idea, you know. Um, go on the Bible if you have the Bible app. Go on there. They have hundreds of reading plans on there that are free. And um, let me see if there's any comments. Laurie, Laurie's gonna bring me some comments so I can share a couple of with you guys. I think there might be a little bit of a delay. Um, Wendy says that she's had a much better and deeper discussion with loved ones. Um, while she's, uh, you know, isolated and quarantined. Um, she says that she has a study Bible on her iPad and that she realized she needed to turn it on airplane mode <laughs> because she kept getting notifications uh, with text or social media. So that's a good idea, too. Thanks, Wendy. Um, to put your, you know, put your phone on, uh, on uh, airplane mode so that you can really focus and have that focused time. Um, here you go, Lars. Thank, thank you all for participating in that. Um, just a little ministry spotlight. We're going to go now to a time of prayer. Do we have any prayer requests, Laurie, that came up? Yes. Okay. Um, so we didn't see any prayer requests. That's all right. Um, if you think of one now, go ahead and put it 
I may not get to pray it because there's a little bit of a delay. Um, but let's pray together. Father, as we sang, you are our shepherd, faithful and true. And Lord, we thank you that even now you are looking after us, that um, you are, are not only concerned with our spirit, but also with our physical bodies, that you are concerned with um, our life in this moment of time and history. And Lord, we thank you that we can draw near to you. Thank you that you draw near to us. And Lord, thank you that even when we, when we get so worried and so just caught up in all of the rumors and the, um, the, 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 the text messages that we get, and we get so caught up in, in worrying about the what-ifs, that you are right there as our good, faithful shepherd to scoop us up in your arms and to whisper in our ears that you love us and you're caring for us and you have us, and you hold us fast. And Lord, I know I need to hear that today. I needed to hear that this week. And Lord, I know some of us especially need to hear it because we're struggling with all of this, not to mention just regular life. And so Lord, I pray that you would shepherd your people really well right now. And Lord, not only that, but that you would help us to shepherd one another that we would take the time to reach out, to send a text message, to make the phone call, because we need one another right now. Lord, we need to minister to one another, to serve one another with the truth of your word and the truth of your great and glorious gospel, that you love us and care for us and give us your favor completely freely. And Lord, we need to be reminded of that. So please help us. I know, Lord, this week I have been, I've had a short temper with my kids. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I pray that you will forgive me for that. Yes. For my short temper. Even this morning, yelling at my daughter for barging into the room. Lord, forgive me for that. And Lord, I pray that you will help us to bring all of our, all of our errors, all of our mistakes, all of our sin. Bring it to you. And Lord, leave it with you. And ask you to be transforming us during this time. Lord, you've, you've, you've let this happen. You've, in one sense, you've planned it. Not for our destruction, but for our good. And so, Lord, if you are shepherding us through rocky terrain right now, Lord, I pray that you would keep us from stumbling. And that when we do, you would pick us up. Shelter us in your shepherding grasp. We ask and pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, at this time, we're going to sing another song. And um, if you'd like to, this is a time that you can uh, go online and, and participate in an offering. We don't have a physical offering today. Um, you can also, if you'd like to participate by sending a check, you can do that. Um, you can send it to P.O. Box 1372, Orangeburg, South Carolina, 29116. P.O. Box 1372. Um, just another way to <laughs> participate in worship as we give as the Lord has given to us and entrust Him with everything in life. Let's worship. <laughs>
give thanks, and I'm also going to pray for another prayer request that came, came through. Lord, we thank you for your provision. Lord, we thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh. You are God who provides. The Lord, our provider. Lord, we thank you that in times of uncertainty, we can trust you. We can trust you for everything. Lord, we know you will provide. Lord, we pray for Anna's friend whose father-in-law is on life support. Lord, we pray um, as he's being isolated until his testing comes back. Lord, that they would be able to connect with him and visit with him. And Lord, I pray for Ashley, for her husband, Sam, for Mr. Morris and Miss Janie and their, their whole family. Lord, we pray that right now you would just move mountains in their life. Yes, Lord, that you would move mountains so that they can know your love and they can know the love they have for each other. Lord, we pray for your healing touch. Lord, you are a God of miracles. Lord, you can change, you can move mountains. And so, Lord, we ask, we pray. Lord, you say that we, we have not because we ask not. And Lord, so we ask for this family that you would bless them with a miracle. And Lord, that you would give them just a clear experience of your presence. That whatever happens, or even as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were facing that fiery furnace, they said, Lord, deliver us from the fire, but even if you don't, Lord, might we praise you. And so, Lord, give us that kind of radical faith. But Lord, we pray for, for healing. Lord, we pray for a miracle. Lord, have your way. Do your will. And make us receptive to you. Lord, we love you and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to take just a moment of silent preparation. So, um, Isaiah, if you can put that screen up, that silent preparation screen. We're going to take a moment to prepare our hearts to hear God's word. And also, um, you can grab your Bible if you're, as you're preparing. You can open up to Mark chapter 14. open your Bibles to Mark chapter 14, and we're going to be looking at verses 22 through 26. We've been, our series is on uh, soul food. This is the ordinary meals of God's grace. This is how do we get more of Jesus in our lives, right? How do we get more of him? And we've looked at, um, we've been going through uh, the, the, the list that God gives the early church. It begins with baptism, and then it comes into um, God's self-revelation in scripture. And then we talked about fellowship of believers last week. And today we're going to be looking at the Lord's Supper as that next, that breaking of bread. And so um, as, as we prepare to hear God's voice through the preaching of his word and his spirit, um, let's ask him to meet with us. Lord, meet with us now. Give us attentive hearts to your word as it is proclaimed. 
Lord, would you minister to us through your word? Lord, cause us to be attentive, awake to it. This medium is tough. This medium is tough to listen to a, a sermon. But Lord, I pray that you would do your work now. Give us mercies for this. And we remove distractions. In Christ's name, amen. amen. So how can you grow, grow deeper in your relationship with God? We all want to grow deeper in our relationship with God, right? We all want to grow deeper. How do you grow deeper in your relationship with God? How do you really connect with Jesus? How can you know him more intimately? How can you experience his presence in your life? Do you need to dream dreams? Do you need to see a vision? Do you need to seek secret knowledge? Do you need to move into a monastery? Do you need to listen for that still, small voice? Do you need to discipline yourself to achieve perfection? Do you need to get into a trance or say certain words? No. No. God doesn't want you to be more spiritual. Let me say that again. God doesn't want you to be more spiritual. God wants you to be more physical. Never thought you'd hear a pastor say that, did you? God doesn't want you to be more spiritual. God wants you to be more physical. Think about it. In Jesus' final gathering with his disciples, Jesus gave them a way to connect with him, to deepen their relationship with him. And it was so simple. It was so ordinary. It was so physical. Jesus broke bread. Jesus broke bread. The last thing he wanted to tell his disciples, the last thing he wanted to give them, was not some, some secret methodology. Right? It was the bread broken. It was something so simple that we miss it. We miss it all the time. We think it's just an empty ritual. But Jesus said, no, no. This is my body broken for you. Mark chapter 14, verses 22 and 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and after blessing it, broke it and said to them, take, this is my body. And he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank of it. And he said to them, this is the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. There's just something about breaking bread, right? There's just something about the physical. It's, 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 you know, we're not disembodied souls. You know what that is? That's called death. <laughs> Right? But we have bodies. We have senses. And Jesus wants your life, your life with him, to experience him to be physical. He wants it to be physical. He wants to nourish your body and your soul. It's one of the most overlooked and underappreciated ways that God invites us to go deeper in our understanding of him. Like baptism... The Lord's Supper is a mystery. It's a, it's a sign and a seal of, what does he say here, of God's covenant. It's a sign of God's provision. It's a sign of his sustaining presence, right? When you eat, you get filled. You get full, and that's what it's a sign of. It's a sign of, of, of his filling presence, of the Spirit's filling presence. It's a seal of God's promise to, to listen to this, to satisfy your hunger. Mm. That God says, I will satisfy your hunger, your hunger for righteousness. Jesus said, it will be filled. So the question for today in the next few minutes is, how can we participate fully in this meal? How can we participate in the Lord's Supper more fully? And so um, I, I'm gonna, I want to say that we're, in order to participate fully, we need to break bread. And in order to explain it to you, I'm going to break bread. 
I'm going to break bread down into those letters. B-R-E-A-D. Okay, I'm going to break <laughs> bread. Yes, I did. <laughs> We're going to break bread. And the B in bread stands for believe. Look at verse 22. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. It says, as they were eating. Well, what were they eating? Well, if you know the context, you know they were celebrating the Jewish Passover. They were celebrating that memorial of deliverance from slavery in Egypt way, way, way back a long, long time ago. They were remembering that the angel of death that came to pronounce judgment on the firstborn son of every Egyptian household in rebellion against God, but passing over the homes that were marked with the blood of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that story? The, 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 the homes that were marked with the blood of the Lamb, the angel of death and judgment, passed over. And that is what Jesus and his disciples were sitting down to celebrate. They were sitting down to celebrate the blood of the covenant, the meal of the covenant. And Jesus says to them, he says, look, take, take, this is my body. We are all given a choice to take, mm -hmm. to believe, yeah. to trust. Mm -hmm. And so will you take, will you trust in what Jesus has done in his life? The Lamb of God? Will you trust what Jesus has done in his life and his death and his resurrection? Because listen, you can't rely on the faith of your parents. You can't rely on the faith of American Christianity. You have to take. Jesus offers the gift of eternal life to you and he says what? Take. Take, take it. It's a call to faith. Do you believe? Not just do you know, but do you believe? Do you receive it? Have you taken it? Have you taken the bread, the bread of life? That's the question at the beginning. That's how we can participate fully in this meal. Number one is to believe, mm -hmm. to take it, to receive it. God invites us to his table of grace. Think about it. God invites us to his table. And who's serving the table? Jesus is serving the table, right? That's why we call it the Lord's Supper. Supper, right? He is serving. We come and we sit and we are the guest of honor. Isn't that incredible? Jesus invites you to the table. And, and the reason we have a minister serving is to represent Christ. My job when we're serving the Lord's Supper is to represent Christ. To serve the people. Seated before the table or seated, you know, if we had a huge table, we could do it that way, right? We could all sit around this huge table. God invites us to his table of grace. Believe. Be. Are. Remember. Look at verse 23. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. Jesus gave thanks. What is thanks? It's looking back. It's remembering what God has done and being grateful for it. It's remembering the good things, the blessings that God has done and being thankful for it. When we gather around the table, we are to remember. We are to stop and ponder the life of Jesus. Ponder his innocence. Ponder his willing sacrifice. When we're seated before the table, we're to ponder the blood-stained brow. We're to ponder the broken body. We are to ponder his blood, his innocent blood dripping down. We're to remember his death. We're to believe, and we're to remember his death. It's a sign that he is the Lamb of God slain for sinners. That his blood does cover over our lives so that the judgment of God will pass over you. Remember his death. Remember the person that you were before Jesus met you. Remember the promises that he has made to you. Remember the ways that you've seen him work in the past. Remember the sacrifice of love. You know, they say hindsight is 2020, right? But it's not always. It's not always. We have to remember. 
with eyes of faith. We have to look back with eyes of faith to see what God has done. To remember and to give thanks. Believe. B. R. Remember. E. Enjoy. Look at verse 24. And Jesus said to them, This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. You know, a meal is not just nourishment. Can I get an amen? amen? A meal is not just nourishment. A meal is pleasure. <laughs> a meal is flavor. You know, God created food. He could have created food to just be bland. But he didn't. He created it with flavor. Even bread and, and the fruit of the vine, even grape juice or wine is full of flavor. And so as we taste the Lord's Supper, we enjoy those flavors, and we enjoy Him. But we remember the blood of the covenant, the covenant promise that God would be our God, that He would make a way for us, that He would forgive us and adopt us into His family, that He would, that he would finish the good work that He started. The meal, the breaking of bread, is supposed to be a time of enjoyment. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be a time of just sitting with Jesus, experiencing His presence. And you know, we probably need to take more time to do that each week. To just sit and enjoy the presence of Jesus. Even as we sit and enjoy a good meal. The Lord's Supper is not a time for empty ritual. Amen. It is a time for renewal. I mean, think about a husband and wife going on a date. What does that date do for that husband and wife? You know, maybe their marriage has gotten boring. But if they go on a date, they get a renewal, right? They get a moment of sitting across the table, enjoying a fine meal, and talking to one another, and renewing their relationship. That's what the Lord's Supper is. It's like, it's like going on a date with Jesus. It's like his church gathering with him and saying, let's renew this thing. Let, let, let's get more energetic about this relationship that we have with you, this love that you have for us and that we have for you. That's what the Lord's Supper is. It's, it's, it's going on a date. Christ and his bride sitting across the table, staring into one another's eyes. That might make you uncomfortable a little bit. It's supposed to. Right? Our, our love for Christ is supposed to be that intimate. And bear in mind this. It's not just you. It's not just you are not the bride. Not spiritually, but what? Physically. Physically. When we gather together physically, God meets us in a way that he doesn't meet us on our own. And that's part of what the Lord's Supper does, is it, it gives us that moment of unity that's physical. right? Because the elements are physical, the bread is physical, the, the wine or the, the juice is physical. And so when we drink it and we eat it, we're, we're, we're experiencing in our bodies the body of Christ. Does that make sense? We over-spiritualize things so much. We think, oh yeah, it's just me and Jesus. No. Jesus has saved a people for himself. And to the degree that you are connected to his body, you can experience his intimacy in deeper and deeper ways. We enjoy Jesus together. We do, don't we? We enjoy Jesus together. We enjoy intimacy on our own, yes, of course. But when we get together physically, God does something incredible there. It's that vertical communion with Christ and that horizontal communion with one another. The hymn writer says that the, the, the fellowship, the love that we have with one another is a mystic, sweet communion. The church is one foundation. That's the hymn. Look it up later. A mystic, sweet communion that we have with one another. And so as we break bread, we believe, we Remember, we enjoy and we A, anticipate. Look at verse 25. Jesus says, Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Jesus says, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. This whole week has felt weird. 
right? It's been a weird week. And you know what's been really strange about it? Is that it has been a time of anticipation. We've been waiting. I don't know about you, but we've been waiting for something to happen, right? We've been waiting. We've been watching. We've been scrolling. (laughs) Just waiting for something to happen, anticipating. And the Lord's Supper is like that. The Lord's Supper is like that. It's It's a little bite of bread, right? It's a little drink of wine or juice. And it leaves you wanting more. It leaves you anticipating and and needing more. And Jesus says, you'll continue to celebrate the Lord's Supper, but I'm not going to. Jesus says, I'm going to my Father in heaven. I'm not going to eat again, or, or I'm not going to participate in this until that day in fullness when my kingdom comes. And so we, in every meal, we anticipate our reunion with Christ in the flesh, in the body, in the resurrection. The Lord's Supper looks back at the cross, but it looks forward to that final victory. It looks forward to that day when the dead in Christ will be raised from the dead and will be given new bodies that are incorruptible. The the Lord's Supper looks forward to the day when we no more will die, when there will be no more sickness or illness or pain anymore. We anticipate that day Every time we take the Lord's Supper, why? Because it leaves us hungry, right? It's a little bit. It leaves you hungry. It anticipates what God is going to do and has promised to do. When one day our spirit and our body will be perfectly united again in a new creation. That our spirit bodies in that day will experience Christ face to face. That we will know him fully and be fully known. Man, that's what this meal anticipates. It looks forward to that. And and not only does it look forward, but it's for now. Because breaking bread is just what we need in this broken world. Breaking bread is exactly what we need in this broken world. Because it anticipates a day of reconciliation. It anticipates a day when every tribe and tongue will sit at the table. Right when, when, when the high and the low will come together around the table of the king. When the enemies of God will be called friends and will join around the table. And look, we get to experience that in a, in a way every time we gather in the Lord's Supper. Right? We, get a, we get to anticipate what God is doing. And one thing I love about our church is we get to see a little bit of that diversity in our church. Of what God is doing to gather us together around his table. It gives us a glimpse of that future promise that we have in the new heavens and the new earth. Believe. Remember. Enjoy. Anticipate. And D, discern. Look at verse 26. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. So after they finished eating, they sang a hymn together. Have you ever wondered why we close our service with a hymn? After we commune, after we receive the Lord's Supper, they end with a hymn. They experience unity and communion in the bread and the cup. And then they express their unity in song. Because because when we sing, our voices blend together. Our voices come together in harmony, and we can discern, we can understand, we can recognize the body. In those, harmon- in those harmonious moments, we get, to ex- we get to see the many become one in a song. Isn't that beautiful? Mm-hmm. We get to experience that through music, and that's what the Lord's Supper is, is driving us toward, that, that, that incredible harmonious unity that God has made in His church. In the Lord's Supper, we commune with the body of Jesus and with the body of Christ. We commune with the body of Jesus and with the body of Christ, Mm -hmm. his church. And there's there's one passage in the book of 1 Corinthians that that, 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 that Paul, the apostle, is is dealing with how they got it wrong. And I just want to share a little bit with you about how they got it wrong. Because this church at Corinth 
some of the people in the church were treating the lord's supper like their personal spiritual privilege they were treating the lord's supper like it was for them only and so they would come early to church and they would hog all the food <laughs> and they would come early to church and they would drink all the wine and paul says they they were they were even getting drunk before church <laughs> why because they were viewing the lord's supper as something for them right it wasn't about the body and so paul in that moment in that context he says, look, this is what Jesus says we're to do. When you all gather together, wait for each other, right? Mm -hmm. He says, wait for each other. When you're all together, then commune. Then take the Lord's Supper. And he says this. He says, discern the body. Discern the body. And that's what we need to do. That's why we, that's why we, can't, that's why we can't take the Lord's Supper right now. Because God wants us to... Fully experience it by discerning the body. To not be like the church at Corinth. Because it would be easy for me to serve you guys here today. But we can't all be together right now. Jesus says, take, eat. Commune with me. Commune with one another. You know, when I was, when I was praying about what to do in this season of church back weeks ago, and I was laying out the messages that I believe God was giving us for this time, I had no idea that we would not be able to actually celebrate the Lord's Supper after this sermon. And so this week, I almost skipped the sermon. I almost said, let me choose a different passage, because that would be kind of weird to talk about the Lord's Supper and then not actually get to, you know, celebrate the Lord's <laughs> Supper. But you know what? I trust God's timing. I trust God's timing because while we're social distancing, we hate it, right? Oh, we don't like it. Well, some, of, some of us do. <laughs> but we miss that communion, right? We miss, we miss that physical presence with each other. I mean, even here in this room, like, we get a little feeling of it, but it's not like it should be. Touch matters. The body matters. Skin color matters. Proximity matters. The physical matters. That's what Jesus is telling, to, telling us in the Lord's Supper. He's telling us, he's, he's telling us, look, this is a time of anticipation. right? Jesus is anticipating right now. He's waiting. And, and in God's providence, in God's providence, we are waiting right now to that time when we can regather as a church. And receive the Lord's Supper together. And I hope that day comes soon. <laughs> we don't know how long this is going to last. But God wants us to discern the body. To believe. To take what he's offered to you in his life, death, and resurrection. To remember what Jesus did for us on the cross. To enjoy his presence. To sit across that table and enjoy him. To anticipate what it points forward to that one day Jesus will serve a great big table mm -hmm. in, the, in the eternal kingdom. And to discern the body. To, 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 to mourn right now. To grieve our separation. To grieve it and to long for the gratification that will come when we can get back together and truly commune around the, around the table. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for meeting us in this moment. Lord, thank you that you gave me this scripture a while back for today. And Lord, I pray that as a church, we would, that we would grieve and that we would anticipate being able to get back together in the flesh, in the body, that we would grow even in our anticipation. That we would grow longing for what you have given to us. Longing for that day when we will meet you face to face. And when your fast will be over. When you will sit down at the table with us. And you will dine with us and fellowship with us. And enjoy us as we enjoy you forever. 
Oh, Lord, we thank you. We pray for strength. Lord, we pray for strength. We pray that you will meet us in other ways. In Christ's name we ask. Amen. Amen. The Lord is good to his people. The Lord is good to us. As we continue to think about these things and reflect on the Lord's Supper, we're going to sing this last song. There is a fountain. Not a trickle. Not a drip. But a fountain. There is a fountain of grace in the life of Christ. Let's worship.
want to be back in communion, present with the whole church. Lord, we love you and we praise you. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. And everybody said together, Amen. Amen.